If you like this channel and what I do here, please help to support my work by checking out one of my books, available from Lulu Publishing and Amazon.com. Thank you. Hiya folks, welcome to Electric Medium Badness. Carl James here, joined by Dan Ryan. How you doing, mate? All right, yeah. It's that day. It's well, that actually, day. no, it's not that day, because no. we're running late this week. We are. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're way, way behind with everything this week, we are. Um, my fault, but um, a lot of things going on. But, yeah, so we got there eventually for, uh, you know what that means when you just sigh like that. Yeah. It's that one, isn't it? Star Trek yeah. Discovery. <laughs> after, after last week's, and, and also what we talked about in the video, knowing what we know now as well. But uh, there we go. What we'll do uh, initially is we will just quickly, quickly bang through the plot. I have my notes here, and then we'll talk about our thoughts and uh, fears and nightmares and <laughs> all that kind of stuff yep. to do in this story. Uh, I think you've got some notes as well, haven't you? So we'll, yeah, I've uh, got a few, yeah. yeah thank you, thank you. Right then, so this is episode eight of season three. It's called The Sanctuary. Uh, we begin with Giorgio talking to the doctor about her current condition, what's going on with her. Uh, I'm going to be jumping all over the place with, as I'm going through this because I don't know if you've noticed this about these stories, but I think they do it in order to just distract people from how incoherent it is because you have like 30 seconds or a minute or so here, and then you jump there, then you jump there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. And it's just so, it's like, it's almost like it's just trying to frenzy you into into just co to complete and total, like you can't keep up with it. Unless so they're yeah. trying to do like a Game of Thrones kind of thing. But, but, maybe, uh... I'd... I'd they're incompetent, know. so they're failing miserably. Yeah. Doing, so. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Doctor checking over Giorgio to check what's going on with her because some strange stuff's going on with her at the moment. Then we go to Book and we find out that he has to go home to Qui Qui John or something like that. Qui John or something like that because of um, uh, Osira, this woman who's been mentioned but never seen so far, and the Emerald Chain. They're causing problems on his planet. Uh, so we jump then to, I think it was, um, the episode was, oh, I can't remember which episode it was now. It was Book when he was a prisoner with the Orion oh, yeah, that was Green chap. Like yeah, I can't the remember. The one was. before last, I think, maybe? Maybe it was, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is Tol Tolor, and he was the, the Green Orion guy from that episode, and he's the nephew of Osira, and he's meeting with her, and um, he's calling her Auntie, o Aunt Osira or something, something like that, you know, as you do. And then she just kills him for, for failing to meet her sort of standards of doing things, basically. Mm. Uh, she throws him, uh, or beam, no, beams him into where, is it beams him into where one of those transworm things are or something yeah, like that? Something like that. Just yeah. ripped him to bits and eats him up. Uh, those are those, I'm assuming those are those big worms that we saw on in the first episode that were on books. Planet, maybe. I think it wasn't it the one that ate Michael Burnham and then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it all just merges into one, doesn't it? This <laughs> it really does. <laughs> yeah. So um, then we find out that we're back at the star base, and we find out that the burn started in the Verubin Nebula, or the Verubin Nebula, Verubin. I can't even remember from a note. So then uh, there's a signal transmitting from the center of this nebula. And it's the music that everybody hears going da 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 um, for that that aspect of things, um, but the key of this episode seems to be Book's planet Quajan. Um, so Book asks Burnham if they can like go and sort it out, blah blah blah, and it ends up that Saru decides that they are going to go with Discovery. Um, then we go back to Sick Bay again, and the Doctor's doing a body scan of Giorgio now. Then we go back to Adira. I will come. Adira is playing their cello, and Stamets comes in. Uh, Grey apparently has stopped uh, appearing to them. Uh, Adira is getting all flappy about them's past lives, is it? Their past yeah, lives? Yeah. Their past lives, right. Okay. Know. 
Yeah, we'll come to the, we'll come yeah. to all that business in a minute. Uh, then we go to the uh, Andorian Rin. It was it Rin. He got his antennas chopped off by the Emerald Chain. I don't know any uh, of his names. I mean, <laughs> he was in that episode that we talked about previously with mm. Book. Then he was gone, and I thought he'd gone, but apparently he's still on the ship. That happens a lot on Discovery, doesn't it? Yeah. You, you don't see somebody yeah. for four episodes, and then all of a sudden, yeah, they're there again. And he wants to leave Discovery with Book, um, but Book and Burnham have already gone. They've gone down to the planet, and it turns out that Quijan has got like a defense network or something that's trapped them on the planet now. They can't locate them or something like that. So then we go back to Georgia again, and now she has a vision about somebody called San or Son, something like that. Um, again, nothing more with that because it's still jumping all over the place. Then we meet Book's brother. Um, then we find out that Asira wants Rin, the Andorian. So Rin is a wanted criminal for her. Um, so she contacts Book's brother. And then it turns out not only does she want Rin now, but she also wants Book. And then she orders her ship to start firing on the planet. Um, and there's all pew pew bombs going off and things like that, photo torpedoes, and everyone's running all over the place and that. Then we're back on the ship again, and Giorgio has hacked her the medical scan, and it said it, it seems as though she's learned that she's dying or something like that. Because and oh, and the doctor yeah. says mm, it's not quite like that, but yeah. So then we're back to the planet again Book and Burnham are now in trouble from the bombardment uh, Rin the Andorian says that he has a plan a way to rescue them using Book's ship um, piloted by Detmer I can remember her name now I actually can remember I used wow. to call her Lisa Lisa One-Eyed Lopez but you know with the, <laughs> but now she's yeah so I know it's Detmer um, Book faces off against his brother who's a uh, Kaikin so they have this little fight and then Burnham shouts stop don't don't fight and she's doing it in such a feeble pathetic way i don't know if you remember that from the episode and she's like don't do it and all that and then but this first initial like she's like stop don't fight and then she turns <laughs> so, around yeah. she's like taking any bets three one. yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then, then the next second she's like rah, 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 rah. so you know inconsistency there with that book agrees to give himself over to osira uh, but Kaihi suddenly changes his mind as you're doing this. Like one minute he wants to hand him over, then yeah. he wants him dead, then he wants him alive, then he won't let him go. Uh, so we go to Book Ship and Detmer and the attack on Osiris ship. It's successful, but before Osira leaves, she says to Saru on the holographic screen type thing that the Federation is going to face the consequences for what they've done. I mean, the original plan was for them to try and trick them into thinking it wasn't the Federation that was doing this attack but I, I think was it you that said i think yeah i'm pretty sure when we talked about it the, i mean the ship comes out of yeah li t tilly tilly fucking tilly Jesus. <laughs> anyway, yeah. she, she's like i've got a genius idea if we have uh, someone going rogue in a non-federation ship they yeah, they, yeah. Won't they won't see blame anything us. wrong yeah, with yeah, that yeah, yeah. they won't buy it at yeah. all even though yeah. you literally see it come out see of it? Uh, the shuttle bay yeah and it's and clear it. that it's, it's clear from there from She's them. like, yeah. they'll be heavily yeah. put... Okay, fuck Tilly as well. What an actual <laughs> two-faced bitch. What a two-faced bitch, right? She literally <laughs> says... She's like, we need someone to go rogue and they'll be heavily punished. I'm like, okay, she's going to do this. And she's fucking yeah. said someone else. I know, I know, yeah. It's like, Basically, you get punished instead. Go. You go. <laughs> yeah. What a bitch. Yeah. And they're meant to be like I a know. family as well. <laughs> yeah, well, they keep preaching on about that, don't they? How, how much they all love each other and you're the bestest ever and all that. But yeah, God. She, I mean, for her first couple of days on the job as, as first officer, you know, my God. Then they have this... Like the glowy forehead things, the brothers, and they put their hands together or something, and they start speaking in tongues like they're possessed by the devil. <laughs> and then there's all these weird space locusty type things coming around. And I mean, it's so cheesy and nonsensical. I mean, I don't know what they're trying to do. They're transmitting some sort of glowy signal into space. It's all very hippie logic and all that, you know. But, uh, Rin reveals that the Emerald Chain is running out of dilithium. That's another one that's just plonked in there, you know, like mentioned once, then it's, you know, that's I mean, that. Isn't everyone? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we come to the final little bit. Book says that the Federation saved his planet from uh, something that had imprisoned them all for a century. It all seems a little bit convenient because uh, what's stopping the Emerald Chain from just coming back again as soon as Discovery flies yeah. off? Um, 
And then Book decides that he wants to be a part of the crew. I mean, I don't know whether he's going to stick the uniform on or what. I don't know, but Probably. he decides that. And that, and that really is it. There's, there really isn't anything more to say. It's it's all over the place and it's boring. Nothing really happens. Did you like um, the little joke uh, plot line in this episode? You will have to remind me because I can't okay. remember. It had so little impact on me. There's that... a couple of times it's mentioned. The first is it's quite near to the start. Saru and Tilly are walking and they're like, have you, have you worked on that secret project yet? And uh, oh, that yeah. secret project was what Saru should say as his commander word. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, I have got it in my notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, you know, it's like we can't use engage. That's already been used. We can't use punch it. That's already been used. And he's like, yeah, wasn't that Pike? Yeah, said? yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I can't even remember. He, he's like. Carry on! Uh, execute or... Was it execute! execute? Yeah, <laughs> the, the yeah. I didn't remember that much. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, one of the things that I did notice there is this... Now that you've told, reminded me what it was, because I couldn't remember what it was, I thought it was the, something to do with Lizard Man, because uh, he was mentioned a couple of times about shedding his skin or something. I can't even that, remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I very much got this feeling of them trying, and I must say failing, very miserably failing, uh, again, to copy the Orville. Try to put little things like that into it, but yeah. I've given Saru and Tilly that comedy banter, such as it was, it was in awful. the corridor about <laughs> really what bad. his new command phrases were going to be. Yeah, it was terrible. It really was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who thought that one up? I don't know. I mean, it was just something like. I think. I think it is desperation. I think it's just mm. like let's try and put something funny into this. What they don't actually realise is they have the funniest joke of all, and that's just the show. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, unintentionally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is. It's painful, but um, it's it's the sad aspect of it all as well. You know where Star Trek's got to now. Um, you and I have been re re watching um, some fantastic Star Trek recently, and um, you know, yeah, yeah. It's it's it puts it to shame, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah, yeah. What the show is now. Again, this thing that you and I have mentioned this several times now, but this whole thing of like why has Discovery got to stay? I know the reason why they're doing it is because it's the centerpiece of the show, but they'd solve a hell of a lot of their problems in the 30th century. Surely they've got the technology to replicate the spore drive for Discovery, <laughs> put it in all their other ships. This problem solved, don't know if you need for dilithium. You know, well, you see, like, the thing is, if they did do that, then Discovery would be completely sidelined. Because it would be, yeah. They're the most yeah, yeah. incompetent of yeah. all of them there. Because they'd, they'd have better ships with better crews doing the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it would just show them put show them up as what they are. Not where, so. like, Ensign's become, like, the second highest in command on the ship. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to come to the issue of Adira now, who has finally asserted their pronoun. Uh, as we said it, it took six episodes for the writers yeah. to um, decide to do this. Um, Adira corrects Stamets about referring to Adira as uh, she or he. That's what Adira actually says. Would prefer not that, that not to be the case now. And Adira would prefer they or them. So as per Adira's wishes, I've been very bad because in previous episodes I've called Adira. Uh, Lady Adira, but that's not uh, a, a gender as, uh, as assigned pronoun or anything like that. That's because it's a reference to um, Babylon 5, wasn't it? Yeah. Lady Adira, the character Lady Adira. Uh, we were talking about how they rip everything off and they rip the name off from that character's name in Babylon 5. Um, but because Adira wants to be them or they now from now on, I'm going to call Adira Lady Adira. <laughs> Because I like saying it. I like saying, Vedi Adira, like Londo. So, <laughs> so, you know, it's all good. It's all good. I'm respecting Adira's wishes. Vedi Adira. <laughs> right. uh, on the subject of people asserting themselves, um, I've got some really choice dialogue <laughs> for this one. Uh, Detma, you go, girl, uh, when she's talking about saving the universe and all that. <laughs> that's, a, that's one of them. Uh, we have... Um, Osira, what a miserable cow! <laughs> she doesn't smile. I looked, I, I looked, I thought it, she's 
um, the actress that plays her, um, Jan Janet Kidder. I think she's related to Margot Kidder, who played Lois Lane in um, the Superman yeah, she, film. Uh, yeah, she is, I think. yeah. But um, yeah, um, I, I looked up some photographs of her. And uh, she does smile. The actress does smile. <laughs> so I'm assuming that that's just the way she portrayed the character. But she looked like um, somebody had super glued the top of her mouth flat and then super glued the bottom of her mouth. <laughs> so she, Might have just been <laughs> shit makeup, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I thought, bloody hell. <laughs> there was no indication of any positive emotion going on there with, her, <laughs> with the character. She's at all, just so. mean, la- mean lady, I guess. Yeah, mean lady. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another uh, strange thing here with character development, you're supposed to feel something for the relationship between Book and his brother. They barely have five minutes of screen time together. Um, not oh, a great deal. Fighting. Yeah, not a great deal of dialogue no. either. They're mo- mostly they're fighting. One minute they, they he, he hates Book or wants to sell him out. The next minute he's like absolutely fine with him. The actors. I'm surprised because the actor whose name I can't remember who plays Book. I do, I do think he's a good actor. I do like the character, but um, they again no chemistry between the two characters, the the actors. So no. um, I didn't think very much of the actor that was playing Kai Heem either. He didn't seem to be emoting or acting very. It was he a bit did, he poor. didn't seem like he was putting a lot into it. Really, really putting any effort yeah. into it. So yeah, so that was another thing. Oh. Uh, I mean, all these things they <laughs> stick out like sore thumbs, don't they, in the episodes? Yeah. Oh, mm. when when they were on that planet, right? You know when they try and escape, and then mm. like the the people from that planet start like they jump them or whatever. Yeah. And then yeah. they're having a little brawl. You know these yeah. these are like, f- but people who like Buck knows who yeah. he's like maybe grown up with or whatever. Michael yeah. Burnham pulls out the fucking gun and shoots one of them. <laughs> <in> the <chest. laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, with those crossbow machine gun type like, things. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're trying to disarm them and neutralise them, not shoot them with a fucking yeah. spear through the chest. Yeah. Probably explains why she went, stop. Because <laughs> really she just wants to go on a mass killing spree. Mm. So she... <laughs> as well, um, as her. right, she got yeah, yeah. demoted. Why? Mm. Is she doing everything that a captain All the or first missions. officer yeah. would do? Last week and ne- this week as well. She this seems she, to be yeah. like her, she is the only character on board capable of doing anything other than it, just pressing it, buttons. If not Saru, this should have been like Tilly. She's the first officer now. Mm, I mm. mean, I'm thankful that she hasn't got that much screen time. But uh... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but still, yeah. you know, she should be doing more of this. Stuff. What does she even do as a first officer? She just fucking sits around Gives and... Him... Gives him recommendations for pithy little catchphrases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and comes up with plans that she doesn't have to be involved with that are but just totally throw nonsensical. Throw everyone severely <laughs> under the bus. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, you can't... It, some, more, some more dialogue here for you. Get this one. I mean, this, is, this one's cringy as hell. Uh, you can't face... You can't face yourself... You never could book to his brother. It doesn't. Even, it's not. Even, it doesn't even work properly in a se- as a sentence structure. You can't. You can't face yourself. You never could. It should be. You. You couldn't face yourself. You never could. Or you can't face yourself. You never can. Yeah. But it's like <laughs> present tense, past tense. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So that was that was another a great one there. Uh, we've got uh, Detmer being sunny. But ah, here's another one from Detmer. If you face something. You can beat it. <laughs> More pithy, vacuous dialogue there for you. Yeah? I'm so glad she said that. Right, right now, I'm going to go and stand on a train track and I'm going to face that train. <laughs> I will defeat it. I'm going to go and face that lion, the one that hasn't been fed for four days. I'm going to stand right in front of him and say, I can beat you because I'm facing you. So, yeah. Here's another one for you. Um, I just need you to be brave for a few minutes. That was Detmer to uh, Rin, the, or Ryan, or whatever his name, the Andorian. Just a few Stunning minutes. and brave. Women telling men to be stunning and brave. Just a few so. minutes. Can he stop after that? Because that, I know that's, <laughs> yeah. that's quite a lot to ask for. Uh, just a couple of mere minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's... Uh, oh, the, here's another one for you. Here we go. Here's another one for you. Uh, the only face safe... The only fail safe you ever needed was you. I mean, if we, I, I can't, you know, I, I can't even remember who said it, but I did, 
I did think to myself, uh, think about this for a minute. The only fail safe you ever needed was you. So you, you are your own fail safe, right? And I was thinking about this and I was thinking, if we adopted that attitude, then somebody would have probably have blown the world up by now with nuclear bombs or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Because we absolutely do need external fail safes in life, <laughs> not just big things, but little things on day to day basis. Mm. Um, I mean, it's, it's all bollocks. I mean, we don't, you know, it just does. It's total nonsensical bollocks. It just, you know. It's like, oh, no, you, don't really need, smart. you don't need, just... yeah, you don't need anybody or anything. You can be your own fail safe. So you, you could be a, a, a psychopathic lunatic, you know, or, or I don't know anything, you know, mm. somebody who's completely off the rails. Um, but you don't need anybody to watch over you and check that you're not doing anything really, you know, dangerous because <laughs> you just use your own fail safe. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's fine. You know, so it's, fine. it's all, it's a free for all now. It's a free for all for it's anybody. The purge. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've had the uh, you can't face yourself one. Um, had a break, break for a few minutes. Yeah, I mean it's it's full of it. It's full of it. This episode. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm not going to go into any more of it um, because to be perfectly honest with you, it's shit. <laughs> Hon- it's shit. And one of the better things I thought this season has been Giorgio. But, like, yes. the writing for a character, I thought was... Like, her actual... The way she acted in her dialogue, I thought was terrible this episode. Yeah, yeah. It was so one-dimensional. Like, her response to anything said to her was just, I will kill you. It was one note, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, yeah literally. It, it... Yeah, when there's the two doctors there, um, talking to her, any time anyone says any statement to her, she's just like, I will kill you. Yeah, I will yeah, destroy she's like, you. And somebody will say, uh, well, does nothing amuse you, Energy? The only thing that would amuse me is if you were dead. You know, yeah, or something like that. That's but, um, yeah, yeah. The only uh, would you like something to eat? The only time I would like a meal is if you were dead while you were serving it. You know, it's like it's like that. They really are like that, aren't they? It's just yeah. everything is like, yeah, yeah. She's in and, fucking McDonald's. She's like, can I have a cheeseburger? <laughs> ah, would you like that as a meal or the burger alone? <laughs> I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I will kill you. Yeah. That's it. I think, I mean, that very badly, what they're trying to do is say um, she's frightened, she's concerned, she's worried about what's going on, and she's lashing out at people around her, but it doesn't get betrayed like that, does it? Not at And all, to be no. honest, she, to some degree, she's always been like that anyway, so that's not that's not a new thing. No. Um, it really, you saying that, it's the one thing that I've been... Oh, I hate saying this because I'm I'm just making a rod for my own back whenever I do say it. But <laughs> it's the one thing that I was vaguely interested in was what it was a bit like the Michael Burnham before when it looked like she was going to clear off and leave them all behind and better for mm. it. And then like literally chronolog- time wise in terms of actual screen time, five minutes later she was back again, wasn't she? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. In terms of our time, it was a week, but yeah, beginning of the next episode, she's back. So that that lost that vague thro- thread of something good, mm. and they'll probably do exactly the same thing next week because um, I saw the next time on Discovery, and it looks like it's her story next week, doesn't it? So it's, yeah, uh, yeah, or walking about in the ice and snow and all that. So there was nothing else there to indicate that it was. And of course, Michael Burnham's there with her again because Michael Burnham has to go everywhere and do everything for everybody. Mm. Um, so they'll probably destroy that flat. So it was the one thing in this episode that I thought, what is going on with her? What is who is this Sam character? Is she gonna die? You know, um, Robert Maya Burnett said that Robert Maya Burnett, yeah. Before there was a bunch of tweets that he put up a while ago, that like a week or two ago, that he was made to take down, and a couple of them were saying the next episode, the next two parter, which is the next episode and the one after, will is it? Oh, right. destroy okay. Star Trek completely. Right. So I don't know what's yeah. going to be in that, but right, yeah. It should be interesting to see whether they do a, a timeless children type thing, mm. you know, like Doctor Who, probably something, something to that effect. Yeah. I would not put it past them at all. I really yeah. would not put it past them. Put it past them. Yeah. As with all these things, though, unless there's anything else you wanted to say, no. I think it's just watch this space, isn't it? Yeah. And we'll and we'll rate it. <laughs> This one was fucking boring. Mm-hmm. Really boring. Uh, I'm really struggling to like think of anything good about it. Yeah. But I, yeah. I don't think it, it, it wasn't as bad as like last episode. I think I think I'll give it a one point five. 
Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm being very oh, generous right. today. You are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did the same thing as you. I looked through to see if there was anything mm. at all. And the only thing that um, vaguely at this point in time interests me is what's going on with Georgia. Yeah. Um, but even that, the way it was put across in this episode was was the yeah. um, and I couldn't figure I couldn't figure out how I could give it a score. So what I did was I timed how long that those bits were in the episode for. Yeah. And did a percentage across yeah. the episode. Yeah. So I'm giving it 0. 0.5. <laughs> 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 I actually timed what bit what bits I thought were like vaguely all right or interesting. Yeah. And that was what, so based on that percentage and time, yeah, yeah, 0. 0.5. So this is nothing for me. Yeah. Yeah, no, this was really bo- Why are they so boring? Can't they at least be like, oh, just give me explosions. At least that's like fun enough to look at after a while. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, there were some in, there were some in this episode, but it, it, I don't know. It just... What, I don't know, what, it just didn't seem to, it seemed lifeless. I don't know if it's yeah. something to do with the special effects, the way they're done, or it's the way that it's like, uh, you know, uh, yippee gay sort of thing and all yeah. that, you know. Yeah. Um, that sort of ridiculously over-the-top way of shouting and doing when they're fighting with ships and all that, you know. I know that's been done uh, before in Star Trek mm. when they've wanted to have some big moment, like uh, Data in Generations, oh, shit, yeah. the planet's coming to the ship's coming towards the planet, you know, and things like that. I know they've done those kind of cheesy things before, but it's really in your face with this, with Discovery, isn't it? It's like, it just, I, 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 for, the, for the, you know, every time I think about this, the gold standard of pukiness for Discovery is yum yum at the end of season two in Sweet yeah, yeah. Sorrow. Yeah. You know, that, that, that is the, uh, yeah. the zenith of, of, of inappropriate dialogue in the middle of battle sequences yeah. and hand combat. Yum, yum. That, yeah. that sums up this show, but it's not tasty. I could assure you that. <laughs> mm. Okay then. So unless there's anything else. The, 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 yeah. There was actually one thing I forgot. Now they make okay. such a big deal about the defense systems on this planet. Right. What the fuck do they even do? Like, the planet's getting bombarded, just fucking blown to pieces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's, that, again, is is totally... You can't make sense of what it is that they're trying to hit, they, um, well, they, they how said the defence system even works. I, I, I thought the... Def, I, initially, I thought the... Did they beam down? They beam down, and what then the defence right. system stopped them from beaming back up. Right. Okay. Now I wondered maybe that was just they could they couldn't locate them that the yeah. defense system was like a scrambler, but you could still fire. But it wasn't like yeah. a shield thing. It was just what? like a scrambler or something. They were but even that wasn't cla- it wasn't clear, yeah. was it? No, it's just the shit. Wasn't clear. Shit. Why do we, yeah. Why do we bother? Fuck me. Yeah. I, I know. I know. <laughs> it's, yeah. All it is is like we said in the previous episode. It's two things. One is to laugh at the absolute ineptitude of the the, the utter incompetence of the people that are, that are running this. Sinking shit. <laughs> um, so that's probably because I was going to say sinking ship, but it is sinking shit. Yeah. And uh, and the other one is to show people, um, you know, the comparison. So yeah. show how much better Star Trek used to be at doing things with the um, excitement, adventure, exploration, character development, um, morality tales, all the works, you know. In every yeah. regard, Star Trek was pre-2009, was always so much better at doing it. They've had some clunkers over the years. They've had some missteps, but vast majority of the time, fantastic. Yeah. Now they just haven't got a bleeding clue. They just, you know, <laughs> and when they're trying to really um, do work from a political, uh, um, socio-political platform as well, we talked about in the previous video, they're even failing in that regard. Star Trek could do it fantastically before. Why? Yeah. How could they? How could can they be that incompetent that they can just get it so wrong? They've got so <laughs> yeah. many opportunities to do it, and they just keep fucking getting it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you must be absolutely. Yeah, words fail me. Mm. You know, you must be the worst writers produ- production team in the well, business. Don't worry, they are. To, to have Second to have words. so many opportunities to do it, and they just keep continually every time just. Missing it. Yeah. They just don't. You know, Doctor so, uh, Who's the worst, but this is second well, worst. Doctor, yeah, Doctor <laughs> Who still holds the crown for, yeah. uh, because also they've had the, they also hold the crown now of totally destroying 
50 plus years <laughs> of getting towards 60 now of of canon mythology are you know everything they've just totally ripped that to shreds yeah they haven't quite done that with starship yet they're yeah, getting yeah. there they're yeah. nearly there. and, I, <laughs> yeah. and i do i still hold to my convictions that it's going to happen it's going to come mm. they're going to do something like that they are going to do it it's not a case of if it's a case of when it's just yeah. a matter of time um and maybe you know if what robert Meyer burnett tweeted about is to say to you know maybe yeah. it's imminent maybe it's imminent mm. you know days weeks away so yeah. we'll, we'll see so i think we'll leave it there for now yeah. um we're, we're going to go ahead and take a little break and then we are going to review something far more fun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic, actually. Yeah. But we won't get to that here. It'll be in our next video. But for this video, for now, we just say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And Dan and I will see you again very, very soon. Take care for now. Yes, goodbye. Bye. -bye.